Hello and welcome to the Embroidered Elephant channel. My name is Kim and today we are going to be talking about temperature blankets. So traditionally temperature blankets are crocheted or knitted blankets. You tend to do one row for every single day of the year, so 365 rows, and the colour changes depending on the temperature. So again, traditionally it tends to be rainbow colours, so you'll start with blue or the dark colours and you'll work your set way up to reds, you know the oranges and the reds um, for higher temperatures. It also tends to be quite a simple stitch so a single crochet, double crochet, usually a single crochet. As I said the blanket tends to take the whole year to do because obviously you aren't aware of the temperature before it's happened yet so you can't do it um, in advance you have to do it either on the day or after the day. There are lots of resources out there to find the temperatures for each day. There's lots of websites out there or you can watch the news or use similar resources. Personally, I have not made a temperature blanket myself. However, over the past few weeks, because I am very interested in starting a project similar to a temperature blanket, I have been looking up um, lots of hints and tips and different ways to make it work for you. So to start with the yarn, so you can use any yarn that you want to but the recommended uh, yarns are either cotton which is available in a wide variety of different colours and is machine washable or acrylic which tends to be cheaper, available in a lot of places and is available in a lot of different colours as well. The blankets can be made in any yarn that you want them to be and the same goes for the weight of the yarn. The blankets tend to be made in worsted weight or DK weight, but they can be made in sock weight or um, possibly bulky, but that blanket would be massive. So a few ways to make this blanket unique to you is to pick your own colours. Rainbow colours don't work for everyone. Some people um, take very muted colours. Other people use blues or purples or a mix of colours. Some people use a grayscale as well. There are also mixed feelings on buying the yarn up front. Some people say that it's a really good idea to buy all the yarn at the start so that you know that you've got it and so that you've got the right dye lot so the colour is exactly the same throughout the year. What I would say is that firstly this can be quite expensive um, to buy lots of yarn and secondly you wouldn't necessarily know exactly how much of each colour you would need which would mean that you'd buy excess more than you need and you would be left with quite a bit potentially at the end of the year as well so if you're also doing this to stash down that's not a great option however obviously buying it throughout the year you run the risk of potentially not being able to get any um, or not being able to get exactly the same colour. So some other ways to get through the year because I understand a year of crocheting or knitting every single day is quite a us is to join a group. So there are plenty of groups on Ravelry, on Instagram, um, on different blogs. Different makers do different temperature projects throughout the year and it's a good way to check in with them and keep you motivated, share progress, etc. And again, um, sharing your progress online, either to your own Instagram page or a YouTube page, etc., is a great way to keep other people motivated and to um, share a lot of the same feelings, any advice that you have, etc. So looking through the temperature blanket theme, I thought that it would be really nice to look at some variations of this so myself I don't really track temperature and a lot of people online feel as though tracking temperature is linked to global warming and therefore it's a little bit of a touchy subject. So firstly looking at the blanket idea, so variations on the blanket, so you can do hexagons, so these are obviously hexagonal, you can do either one a day um, if they're quite small or you can make bigger ones with um, one round every day and then by the end of it you will hopefully have enough squares to make a blanket. This would obviously require quite a lot of math so as with most of the ideas. Another idea is granny squares, 
again you could do one for a week and do one round per day of the week mini grannies so you can do one mini granny square and you would need to do a square at the start a gauge swatch to see how big the blanket will be and how much yarn you'll need as well so building on the idea of a blanket you can start a corner to corner crochet blanket so exactly as it sounds you start in one corner you increase your stitches to make it a square or a rectangle however long you want it to be and then you decrease um, to meet in the other corner so again you could do um, one stitch or one row per day another one is to vary stitches so you could start with a single crochet um, then if it's rainy you could use a puff stitch if it's sunny you could use a linen stitch um, just vary it like that and another one that I've seen is called the lazy waves so it's crochet that looks like waves so it goes increase decrease increase decrease I'll try and pop a picture of it on the screen so you know what I mean but then other than the blanket idea there are a few others literally you could you could take this idea to anything that has enough rounds on it so for example you can make a shawl or a wrap these obviously go around your shoulders to keep you warm and it I can imagine it would be very easy to make a wrap that has enough stitches on it or enough rows on it because you can increase a wrap however long you want to really a similar idea is a scarf so again you'd start at one end and work along you will get quite a long scarf and um, depending on the stitch you use obviously I would recommend if it's something that you're wearing you use stitches that are very close together such as a linen stitch you could also make a sweater or a jumper if you're in the UK and you could start with the um, the front and make it in four panels so again this would take a bit of maths a bit of working out how to do it I'm sure that there are people online who have already made one or who have a pattern available and the last idea which is a very big idea is amigurumi if you've ever had a look online for ideas on um, temperature blankets you have, you may have seen the temperature amigurumi snake which exactly as it seems um, the temperatures are different stripes on the snake's body you can have a temperature cat which same same idea really um, you can have a temperature any animal you want it to be so you can take this idea really anywhere so now for some ideas on variations of temperature I'm not a big fan of tracking temperature I never look at the temperature outside because it doesn't mean much to me um, the same as weather I don't tend to look it up beforehand because it's usually wrong <laughs> But I had a look online at various blogs and there are so many ideas out there. Um, so I just wanted to share a few with you. So the first one is quite similar to temperature, but it's the sunrise and sunset. So you can do it for the amount of hours in the, between sunrise and sunset. You can do it for weather. So for each different type of weather, so rain, sun, cloudy, indifferent, windy, um, you can do a different stitch or a different um, colour yarn. If you live in the UK, it might be a nice idea to do how much it's rained in the day. So you can, um, again, track this online. So that might be quite fun. It might be a little bit sad <laughs> if you're in the UK as well. Another aspect to the tracking part of this blanket was to track habits. So everyone knows that when it gets to the 1st of January, lots of people have different goals. And people were sharing ideas online about goals that you could track with this blanket or with this project. And because it is tracking something every single day, as long as you can put a value on it, you can put it in the blanket. So for example, you could have a weight loss blanket so for every pound or so that you lose, if that's your goal, you could add a stripe or um, you can vary the colours on the blanket. A mood blanket. 
so you can assign each mood a different colour or a different stitch and at the end of the day when you're reflecting you can put a general mood on your day. Another one is hours slept so again you can assign the different numbers a different colour so one to two hours, three to four etc. Depending on how many colours you want in there can depend on how many how much you break it down. Water drunk so how much water you've had today have you had enough this might be quite cool to do in different variations of blue because that would correlate to water obviously you can do it with books or how many pages you've read today um if you've read a lot it can be a darker color than if you've not read that much with another is if your goal is to read more books during the year you could crochet a stitch depending on what, what book you're reading. So you could crochet in red for uh, romance, you could crochet in blue for true life, um, green for sci-fi, and you could put white in between for days where you finish the book and you haven't quite started a new one. Um, just a side note, a lot of people do put um, a white or a stripe between each month so that they have the difference there. You could do one dependent on the movies that you've watched or a series that you're watching at the moment. Do one for how many episodes you've seen or what genre of movie you're watching that day. One for time spent on phone. Now I feel that this would be probably quite scary for me because I spend a lot of time on my phone but a lot of phones nowadays have trackers for seeing how long you've spent on your phone. Usually it's measured in hours or it could be minutes if you're very very good um, but assigning that to a colour and throughout the year hopefully as you fulfil your goal you will see that you're spending a lot less time on your phone per day. Another one is money spent so if you spend a lot of money you can use a darker colour than if you haven't spent anything. And this will be quite interesting to see at the end of the year um, whether you've spent more days spending money or saving money. Another one could be money earned if you are a small business, just, just an idea, um, or how many orders you've had that day. Again, I feel this would be really interesting to track. Building on the idea of hours slept, you can also do one dependent on the time that you woke up especially if it's a goal of yours to wake up earlier in the morning. You could relate this to literally any habit that you can think of um, or anything that you want to track throughout the year. So I've mentioned before I do have a bullet journal where I have habit trackers in there. So every day that I do something, I tick it off. For example, if I take my vitamins in the morning, I will tick it off and then at the end of the month it's really interesting to see how many times I have fulfilled my habit. I do tend to track this more so at the start of the year and then somewhere in the middle it gets a bit lost but as I said it would be really interesting to track this on a crochet project where you track it every single day. One bit of advice I did see is to maybe pick out a couple of times a week to work on the project rather than having to grab it every day. This makes it less of a big task. Also working in mini granny squares, you can do a few at a time and maybe batch them. Um, so it feels like less of a chore if you were to work on a big project every single day. Some of the other random ones that I saw online is to track how many animals you've seen that day. Track the native birds that you've seen that day, track the amount of dogs that you've seen, or track the flowers that are blooming in your garden. Um, again, you can assign each flower a colour. Um, I think it would be really nice to do it as the colour of the flower. You could also see how many people have um, come to visit your home. Um, you can mark special occasions throughout the year as well. So another idea, if none of those catch your fancy or you're not inspired by them, is to have a random number blanket. What I mean by this is grabbing a dice or a couple of die or um, one with 20 sides or however many, assigning each of the different numbers a colour and giving it a roll every day. 
It'll be interesting to see at the end of the year whether there's one number that comes up particularly more so than others. I will say it will be quite difficult to guess how many different skeins you will need of different yarn. And just a couple of closing tips. So you don't have to buy new yarn for this project. You can use the yarn that's in your stash if you've got enough. You can just assign different colours to different numbers or different values for yourself and use them like that. I would advise you as well to go and look for different colours in the shop to see how they look and to check that you actually like them because sometimes online the colours can look quite different. And lastly, it is a great idea to make sure that you write down each of the temperatures or each of the values every day so that if you do fall behind, you can pick up where you left off. One interesting idea is that you don't have to start it from the 1st of January. You can start it from any day. So for example, some people do it for their first year of marriage. So they um, do the temperature or they do a value from day one, the day that they get married, and they finish it on their anniversary. Some people start it on the days that they were born, again going through the temperature, um, for the first year of their baby. You can literally pick any day, it doesn't need to be the 1st of January, and you don't need to start it on the 1st of January either. If you find this video in the middle of the year, why not pick up a hook and start? As I said, there are lots of websites available online. If you fall behind on temperature or a similar um, weather condition, you can go back and view them online. I'm gonna just advise you not to wait too, too long and as I said, there are plenty of resources online to go back and check different temperatures and different weather conditions as well. Just check that these are available before you start so that you're not disappointed or caught out in the middle. So that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching my video. If you have any other ideas of things to track in your temperature blanket or your temperature shawl, um, feel free to leave a comment below and subscribe if you like this video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, bye.